that's the funniest part. Like Americans, Cuba is not the only country that do does this. Almost every country does this. Okay. Things like poorly coordinated care or fragmented insurance networks and good doctors can make honest mistakes. The human body, after all, is a sloppy puzzle of wet nooks and dry crannies. Every inch <laughs> of this skin sack is confusing. So let me be clear, this isn't going to be a takedown of medicine. I don't want anyone to spin this into a headline that says, John Oliver, champion of illness and death, finally <laughs> destroys doctors. Doctors are great. They're one of the top things any parent would say they want their kids to be, besides engineers and just, like, not annoying. <laughs> The vast majority of doctors are dedicated professionals who strive to meet reasonable standards of care for their patients, but a small fraction aren't and can end up doing shit like this. A doctor performs... I think it's pretty... Okay, here's a take. I wonder if you guys uh, agree with me on this, but, like, I've never once in my life ever thought about being a doctor. It, like, it was so far removed from my, like realm of possibility like, i don't even think my parents were ever like this dumb ass is going to be a doctor i think they always knew that i was just it was just not happening you know you never told us ad avoiders the interview time oh um yeah it's probably gonna happen this week and five seconds remaining until the ad break is over so we did do it in the three minutes surgery on the wrong baby there's no excuse for operating on the wrong baby investigators say the 52 year old doctor actually admitted to using drugs while conducting do you think we should have the same mindset or no what about being a doctor if a twitch streamer changes your life that much like alter the trajectory of your life then maybe yeah you shouldn't be a doctor at all honestly his medical practice. In video she posted online, Dr. Wendell Davis Boutte is both dancing dermatologist and singing surgeon. She mugs for the camera and raps with an unconscious patient inches away. That don't live here anymore. Look, there are many situations where it's appropriate to dance, like at a wedding, or when a cartoon racist shoots at your feet, or on a certain grave, but in the middle of surgery is not on that list. There is a reason the Hippocratic Oath doesn't go, first do no harm, then slide to the left. <laughs> that doctor, unsurprisingly, has been sued multiple times by patients who claimed her negligence left them disfigured and, in one case, brain damaged. And those sort of errors, ones caused by negligence, incompetence or misconduct, are a cause for serious concern, because a... Bro, if my doctor is doing a TikTok, while they're performing on me and then it causes a life altering error. I I'm, I'm one dying immediately so that I can haunt this fucking doctor for the rest of their goddamn life. And the, I'm not only haunting the doctor, I'm haunting every fucking, like I'm haunting seven generations. Okay. I'm sticking around for seven motherfucking generations to make sure that their children, their children's children and their children's children's children, and their children's 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 children fucking suffer the consequences. I'm putting a goddamn curse on the family, okay? That is insane. What the fuck are you doing, dumbass? Focus on the fucking body in front of you, dumb fuck. God damn, dude. I thought it was bad enough that, like, Ben Carson is a fucking esteemed neurosurgeon. You know what I mean? Like, that dummies can be fucking surgeons and shit. Jesus Christ, dude. Call me the fucking Democratic People's Republic of Korea the way I'm making punishments go across eight generations, okay? Yon me park shit. I'm making the children's 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 eat rats that eat the children and then the children eat the rats. That type shit. That's the, that's the energy I got on. A very small number of doctors can commit a lot of them. In fact, one analysis found that less than 2% of physicians responsible for half the money paid out in malpractice suits over 25 years. Now, the good news is there's a regulatory body that's supposed to protect us from bad doctors, state medical boards. These are the panels whose job it is to issue licenses, suspend them, or in extreme cases, take them away. Hospitals can fire a doctor, 
patients can sue them, but only a state medical board can ensure that they never practice medicine in your state again. Oh, God. Our, oh, God. This shit is going to fucking cause me to... Oh, it's going to hurt my brain. Oh, God. I can already see what's going on. Especially considering that, like, we have the absolute worst fucking policy of, like... Remember, Andrew Wakefield was... was Andrew Wakefield was a British doctor. I say was because before he became very prominent in both the UK and now specifically in the United States of America as being like the number one creator of the conspiracy that vaccines cause autism, okay, the eminent anti-vaxxer doctor guy. Um, in the UK, he tried this shit to promote his own vaccine instead of uh, the, uh, the other vaccine that was prominent. And guess what happened, okay? They fucking took his doctor license away. Then he came to America to become profoundly successful. Again, that dancing doctor was suspended by her state's board, but that's actually a pretty rare occurrence because the percentage of physicians who face any sort of real consequences from medical boards can be surprisingly low. One study found that nationwide of nearly 900 physicians who've been judged by their own peers to be an immediate threat to health or safety, only around half had ever had licensure action taken against them. And there are doctors who will tell you that this is a problem, like this one, who actually ran Mississippi's medical board. What folks have to realize is that the medical board is not a substantial barrier to them being injured by a physician. Well, that's not great news. <laughs> it's probably one of the least reassuring things a doctor could say, besides oopsies or <laughs> I'm running for Senate. So... <laughs> Given that these boards seem so lax and the stakes are so high, tonight, let's talk about state medical boards. And let's start with how they're supposed to work. While boards' processes vary widely from state to state, very basically, when a board gets a complaint, they review it, and if they find it credible, investigate. And if they want to take action, like suspending or taking away a licence, that can start a lot of negotiations between the doctor and the board. So it's a long process that can be very expensive, which is a problem given that many medical boards are strapped for resources. California's, for instance, has openly called itself severely underfunded, and an outside monitor found that that has led to delays, disruptions, and other investigation deficiencies. And that may help explain why in many states, cases can move very slowly. One local news investigation in Nevada found that some cases have spent up to seven years under investigation with no resolution. And think about that. That means if a case was resolved today, it could have been filed in 2017. In that time frame, we've had a global pandemic, a president who looked directly at a solar eclipse, <laughs> an armed insurrection, a different president who ended a speech on gun control with God Save the Queen Man, <laughs> a Sophie Turner Joe Jonas wedding, a Sophie Turner Joe Jonas divorce, and the entire series run of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> seven years is just seven years, but it's also 6,000 years. <laughs> and all the while, doctors can continue to practice. Boards can continue deliberating even if a doctor's been convicted of a crime. Take Dr Gaiasuddin Syed. A few years ago, he pled guilty to conspiracy for funneling lab testing to a company in exchange for kickbacks. But even after that, Texas's medical board was still deciding what to do about his licence, which is especially wild, because this was by no means his first go-around with the board. In 2016, the board found Syed failed to meet an adequate standard of care. In 2019, the board found he was prescribing drugs to patients he should not have been. And just last year, the board ruled the doctor behaved inappropriately with three female patients. Syed kept his medical license through all of it, has it right now, is still seeing patients. I mean, you've been convicted of a serious crime by the federal well, government. Yeah. But yeah. You're going to report to prison in a few months. Yeah. <laughs> That's some oddly upbeat energy there. <laughs> given the question that he's responding to. But think about that. He was still practicing medicine when that interview happened. For all we know, there was a patient waiting for their appointment to start, wondering what the hold-up was, and then a nurse came in and said, Dr Syed will be right with you. He's currently on the news admitting weirdly happily that he's going to prison. Just go ahead and put on a gown. <laughs> and the fact that doctors can keep treating patients while their case goes through the system can be infuriating to anyone who gets hurt in that time. Take this woman who says she underwent a botched cosmetic surgery that resulted in sepsis and an unplanned double mastectomy. It was only afterwards that she learned some troubling details about her doctor and a prior case he'd had where a patient died. 
the Medical Board of California had actually reached a decision about Dr. Malavi and the 2018 patient death. This shit sucks so bad. I'm a resident in California. The state medical board is so slow and shitty. There's just not affecting bad doctors. Normal doctors like me are affected too. I had to take four fucking months leave of absence from my residence because it took so long to give me my training license. All the boards are super underfunded and understaffed. It's so fucked. I'm going to be honest. I have, a, I have a somewhat controversial take on this. I think the, the, uh, what is it, AMA? Is kind of fucked up. And I think they artificially limit the amount of doctors that could exist beyond like, I think beyond the fact that like there are very obvious financial hurdles to overcome to become a doctor to begin with. I legitimately think they genuinely control the market in order to keep doctor salaries as high as fucking possible. It is really, really, really fucked up. I genuinely, I, I, this is something that I, that I honestly believe. I think that the, I guess the controversial part about it is that I specifically think that there should be more doctors and therefore doctors would probably get paid a little bit less. And I think that that is unironically, I think that is unironically something that many people who want to become doctors um, would probably even uh, be on board with. Like you get to have all of your, your schooling covered, but then, you know, the state assigns you an area that you have to work at, at least for your residency, for an extended period of time. Which is usually how it works in countries with both socialized healthcare and also on top of that, countries with, um, you know, free public education. I love the people going, oh, like Cuba. No, bitch, I mean like Turkey or literally any other fucking country. It's not just Cuba that has this. Okay, that's the funniest part. Like Americans, Cuba is not the only country that do, does this. Almost every country does this. Okay. This past May, but it wasn't until October that decision took effect and Malavi's medical license was suspended. It was within that five month window in August before any discipline that Millie had her surgery. I think that things need to change. I think that the laws need to change. I think the medical board. So we can underpay them and overwork them like teachers? Yes. Yes, that is exactly what I mean. I think we should uh, underpay and overwork doctors is exactly the takeaway. Thank you for understanding that. Hey, by the way, in many of those places where teachers are underpaid and overworked, there are no doctors. I don't know if you knew that or not. This actually solves that problem, you dumb fuck. You dumb, stupid piece of shit. You obviously live in a place like fucking Connecticut, so it's not a big deal for you. But, you know, for all the motherfuckers living in West Virginia, it's kind of a big deal that there are no fucking rural hospitals in a hundred-mile fucking radius. So you had to be medevaced by a goddamn helicopter for, like, a severe injury. Okay. Stupid fucking bicoastal elitist piece of shit, dumb fuck with a doctor parent, so he thinks every, he knows everything that's going on in the fucking nation. I'm in the Netherlands, it's on even here. The medical boards and universities regulate the amount of doctors because of income and the degree causing a major shortage of doctors. There are plenty of people who can be doctors, but systems and hierarchies block this. Yeah. I fucking hate that shit.
hair needs to change. I mean, I'm a hairdresser and the Steve Board of Cosmetology is so on you. I mean, for hair. <laughs> Why isn't it like that for doctors? She's right. And look, I say this as someone who's gone through my fair share of high stakes hair butcherings <laughs> in the past. But even I think medicine should be regulated more tightly than hair. <laughs> so medical boards can be underfunded and slow, and patients can suffer in the gaps. But the problem isn't just one of resources, it's also who is on these boards, because most are made up heavily of doctors, which makes sense. There are many scenarios where physicians have to make difficult decisions that only other medical professionals can effectively judge, but it's generally agreed the board should also feature public members like advocates who can speak on behalf of patients. The thing is, that doesn't always happen. The Federation of State Medical Boards recommends that the public should make up a quarter of each board's membership, but only about half the boards across the nation meet that standard. In fact, up until recently, Louisiana's board didn't have a single member who wasn't a physician. And that can be a problem because doctors tend to protect their own. Just listen to this man who served as one of the non-physician members on California's board describe what he saw in the room. The way they speak is always with doctor care in mind. You never hear patient care ever. And I mean ever. Do you think the way the medical board functions in the state of California actually ends up costing patient lives? There's no question that it costs patients lives. It's not ideal if a board never thinks of patient care, since patient care is kind of doctor's whole thing. Without patients, doctors are really just failed urine collectors. <laughs> that, that guy has actually called for California to be much stricter with physician misconduct, oh. and it's kind of... T Here's another old Hasanabi take. Are you ready for this? I've said it before, if you have an MD, you can't get an MBA. I think it should be illegal. I think it should literally be illegal to get a fucking MD and, a, and an MBA at the same time. I think it is a violation of the Hippocratic Oath to be pro-capitalist and also a fucking doctor at the same time. You can't do both. If you want to do hospital administration, you do hospital administration. You can't be a doctor while simultaneously being, uh, for while simultaneously getting an MBA. Telling the extent to which some of the doctors who served on that board with him didn't appreciate his input. One physician member on the board physician. chastised Watkins last month for rocking the boat. In my eight years on this board, I have not encountered another board member who has been so negative about our process as Mr. Watkins. Wow, that's pretty harsh, although I have to say I've not encountered another person who looks more like a long-lost member of the Trump legal team. <laughs> he looks like someone you'd expect to see selling scalps tickets for a Bon Jovi concert outside Madison Square Garden. I could go on, but, but I won't, except, you know what, I will actually do just one more. He looks like the before photo in a Rogaine commercial starring Al Pacino. OK, now, now, now I am actually done. But also, I will say, saying that you've never encountered someone so negative about your medical board's process might say less about that guy than it does about your process. Because reticence about punishing fellow doctors is part of a much bigger problem in the culture of medicine. It's a phenomenon so common it's been called the white coat code of silence. In fact, even when medical boards initially hand down harsher punishments, Doctors can still negotiate lighter sanctions with them, which boards too often can contrive weird excuses to do. Take this case of a doctor who was eventually convicted for illegally writing prescriptions for over a million pain pills. In 2016, the board's own records show he was suspended for operating an unlicensed pain management clinic where nearly 10,000 prescriptions for controlled substances were written. But 10 months later, the board lifted his suspension. In its records, the board cites factors like he expressed remorse, had a genuine misunderstanding of pain management requirements, and was a very young and inexperienced physician, even though he was 46 at the time and had been practicing for over a decade. Yeah, I don't know if 46 counts as young and inexperienced. I'm 46, and I've been doing...
people are so fucking stupid. I swear to God. This job for over a decade, and people could say many things about me. He's squawky. He's hyper. He seems more like a coked up Sotheby's auctioneer than a comedian if it weren't for how much he hates everything about Sotheby's. But no one would say very young and inexperienced. It's just objectively not true. <laughs> this leniency can even extend to doctors who've engaged in sexual misconduct. A 2016 investigation found that some doctors who'd sexually violated patients were returned to practice with as little as a three day course on appropriate doctor patient boundaries which really doesn't seem like enough. If you'd ask me to guess how long they should face discipline for, I'd definitely say something longer than one Lollapalooza. <laughs> In fact, nationwide, that investigation found of the 2,400 doctors publicly disciplined for sexual misconduct, half still had active medical licences. And this was particularly bad in That's some insane. states. Georgia and Kansas, for example, allowed two of every three of those doctors to return to practice, while in Minnesota, it was four of every five. Which is so bad, I'd like to propose a new state slogan for Minnesota. Land of 10,000, actually, forget about our lakes. Someone needs to figure out what's going on with the doctors here. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> so, to recap, punishments for doctors can be rare, light, and dangerously slow in coming. And there is one more issue here, which is that you may simply never find out about them. A recent survey found that it remains too difficult for the public to find complete information about physicians on their state medical board websites, due both to poorly designed and confusing websites and to gaps in the types of available information. And what that means is that sometimes the only way people learn about a doctor's past is if a news organisation looks into it. This man's mother's leg was left paralysed after a spinal surgery, and when CPS looked into the doctor involved, they discovered some awful facts. We dug through state and court records and found that Dr. Svabek lost his surgical privileges at two Indianapolis hospitals after his practice fell below the standard of care and concerns were raised about his honesty and truthfulness. Dr. Svabek has settled five suits over more than a decade, the most of any orthopedic surgeon in Indiana in the last 20 years. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. I had no idea. You know, kind of like whenever you buy a car, it has a car fax. You know, it's almost like a doctor should have a... Dr. Fax. Yeah, there probably should be. Because doctors know everything about us, if we smoke, if we're depressed, how deep all of our holes go. <laughs> but we know next to nothing about them. Now, the good news is there actually is something like that. The National Practitioner Data Bank, or NPDB. It's a federal repository of information on medical practitioners, including board discipline, hospital discipline, and malpractice payments, which sounds great. Unfortunately, you can't access it. It's only available to hospitals, medical boards, and a few select medical and government entities, on top of which not all problem doctors show up in it. In fact, over the past 13 years of the over 6,000 hospitals in this country, only around a third submitted at least one report on action they've taken against a doctor, which feels suspicious, cos I doubt two-thirds of hospitals have gone 13 years without a single doctor fucking up. And one reason for that is that hospitals can find ways to skirt the reporting requirements. For instance, they're required to report a doctor who loses privileges for more than 30 days. But sometimes, hospitals will just limit the term to 29 days so it doesn't have to be reported. And this can be for multiple reasons, including that they might have an investment in their doctor's reputations. In New Hampshire, this top-earning cardiac surgeon was once featured in ads for his hospital, but even as he was racking up what would become one of the worst surgical malpractice records among all physicians in the United States, the hospital seemed anxious to downplay it. So much so that even after a serious incident, when he was on call but did not come to the hospital for hours, despite repeated phone requests to deal with a patient having a life-threatening situation, he was suspended for 28 days, a number conveniently just shy of what would have been required for him to be reported to the database. And I would say that that was the most shameless cover-up in a hospital that I have ever seen, but I have seen this episode of Melrose Place, <laughs> where Dr Kimberly Shaw tries to throw people off the scent of her involvement in a hit-and-run. Think about it. The driver of that car was wearing a short, blonde wig. Now, how could I get all of this hair under something like that? Does this answer your question? You're a dead man, feel that. That is television right there. <laughs> Step aside, 911 Lone Star. Melrose Place walked so that you could run. <laughs> but 
even if a doctor is reported to the database, that report still might not be seen because, incredibly, some state medical boards simply don't check it when granting licenses to doctors who've moved from out of state. Nice. In 2017, 13 state boards didn't check it once. And some states, including until recently Texas, even employ an honour system approach, which relies on physicians to self-report. But guess what? The bad doctors tend not to do that because, you know, they're bad doctors. <laughs> so, unsurprisingly, when a Texas news station bothered to look into who was practising in their state, they found 49 doctors who'd had their medical licences suspended, revoked or surrendered in other states. And some of the stories were shocking. Among the doctors currently practicing in Texas, a Colorado neurosurgeon disciplined for performing surgery on the wrong spinal disc, a Wisconsin orthopedic surgeon whose license was suspended indefinitely for operating on a patient while intoxicated, and a Florida doctor reprimanded for prescribing, quote, excessive quantities of oxycodone leading to a patient's death, all of them still showing a clean record in Texas. It's true, a surgeon yeah, who operated baby. on the wrong part of someone's spine still had a clean bill of health in Texas. And you know who probably doesn't? His fucking patient. But it's not just Texas. At least 500 physicians who've been publicly disciplined, chastised, or barred from practicing by one state medical... I'm sorry, brother. It's called freedom. Okay? Look it up in a dictionary. I don't know if y'all have it in your country, okay? ...board have been allowed to practice elsewhere with a clean license. That's right. Oxford Dictionary. Look it up. We have it. It's an American invention. Do you understand me? Just like we invented the American language, dumb fuck. And some have almost made an art of it. Like this cosmetic surgeon who was disciplined in 2015 after a patient's death in Oregon. He then began practicing in Illinois, where he was investigated after another patient died in 2016. Five years after that, Illinois... Bro, this chatter is still going off about overworked doctors. I'm losing my fucking mind. Most of the... Most of these doctors are overworked. At a hospital I worked at, residents made to work five days straight with no breaks. Yeah, you know what would help with being overworked? More doctors. So thank you for arriving at the conclusion that I fucking delivered literally in the beginning of this conversation, which you had a problem with. Also, it's idiotic. To fucking claim that these doctors are overworked when one of them literally was just over prescribing oxycodone, uh, oxycodone. Oxys. Like, oh yeah, is that why they were over prescribing? Like, it's, it's, yeah, he was so, he, he was so, he was working so hard. That's why he was drinking on the job. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Boys, medical board declared him an immediate danger to the health and safety of the public and suspended him for at least 18 months. But you'll never guess what happened next. <laughs> Despite being found to be grossly negligent in multiple cases across two states, Dr. Sharma still held an active medical license in one state, Indiana. We're working late today, okay? And as we discovered... So we're partway through the transformation. We just... He's actively practicing there today. Yeah, he wasn't just still practicing, he was broadcasting it online too. And general tip, if any part of your get ready with me routine involves scrubbing up, stop recording right now. Because there are a few things I just never want to see my doctor do. Cry, get drunk, or say, hey guys, welcome to my channel, we're working late tonight over my unconscious nude body. But the larger fact is, if you are a doctor with a trail of irreparable oh, harm behind you, chatter. it seems Never you can mind. just hop around until you find a state that'll look the other way. It's just one of the ways that doctors are like Catholic priests, along with having fun outfits that are just fancy pyjamas and quietly thinking they're God. <laughs> and incidentally, <laughs> if you want to check yourself whether a doctor's been disciplined out of state, that might be difficult. Because a survey a few years ago found that the medical board websites in all these places don't include actions taken in other states. Honestly, based on what we've seen so far, the best thing you can do as a patient to successfully vet your doctor might be to check TikTok to see if they're posting videos of their surgeries online, <laughs> because that seems to be the only surefire sign of disaster. So, what can we do here? Well, first, we need to acknowledge that doctors have powerful lobbying groups that have fought medical board reform hard, so change is going to be difficult. How difficult yep. is it going to be? Well, in researching this story, we found this CBS report from nearly 40 years ago that could have aired last week. It, it featured a bad doctor who'd moved from state to state to state to avoid consequences, 
and this explanation of the larger problem. The Massachusetts board, indeed most state boards, suffer from underfinancing, understaffing, and underorganization. The board here employs only two investigators. Because the boards are staffed mostly by doctors, consumers, lawmakers, and even some doctors are now asking whether the medical community can police its own and still provide quality care. Most doctors in this country are practicing good medicine, most of the 400,000 doctors. But perhaps 10, 20, 30, 40,000 doctors are not practicing good medicine. Most of them are never disciplined. It's too dangerous a situation to keep tolerating. Yeah, it is too dangerous a situation to keep tolerating, but it seems like we've done it. Because that is from four decades ago. It's this whole story with warning signs about funding and calls for reform, all told by, let's be honest, a much hotter me. <laughs> but regardless, you laugh too hard at that. But regardless, there are some obvious steps that we could take here. Lawmakers could add more public members to state medical boards and increase their funding. They, they could also require that all disciplinary actions taken against a doctor in whatever state they've worked in, plus info like malpractice settlements and hospital discipline, be easy to find on a public website. And while we're talking transparency, the NPDB was created exactly for that reason, so state boards should be required to regularly use it. Look, the vast majority of doctors help people and are worthy of the value that society places in them. But this is a field that relies pretty uniquely on absolute trust. And again, I am not saying that all or even most doctors are bad, nor am I telling doctors how to do their jobs. I'm only 46, so I'm, I'm very young and inexperienced. <laughs> but what I am saying is that it would serve everyone, including those many good doctors, to fix this mess. Because the way we've been running medical boards is a bit like giving CPR to a frozen solid man. <laughs> it's absolutely baffling, and I cannot believe someone ever thought it was a good idea.